Hey K-poppers and welcome back to How Are You? This week we're talking about a pretty interesting subject that can definitely stir up some strong opinions, K-pop idols dating. We're going to start from square one and review why it's been such an explosive subject in general and then we'll look at some of the reasons why it's been banned in the past by certain labels. Next we'll talk about how Hyuna and Don's saga with Cube helped push the issue forward in a big way and finally we'll see how things stand in 2021 and where they could still improve. Before we get started, I want to quickly thank Hallyu's honorary producers. If you want to show off your bias group here, share your picks in weekly videos, and join a vibrant Discord community with watch parties, custom emoji, and more, all you need to do is support Hallyu on Patreon. So like I said, I'm going about this assuming you don't know anything about the history of dating in K-pop. And I think a good place to start is taking a look back and talking about some examples of the scandalous nature some idol couples have faced to get an idea of just how explosive this issue really has been. Obviously, it goes without saying that the further back you go in time, the more strict and extreme dating bans and reactions to dating have been. Dating is generally a lot more accepted by fans and labels nowadays, which we'll get to in a bit near the end of the video, but in the early days of K-pop, even through the second and third generations, dating was a serious no-no, especially for idols who hadn't established themselves as a superstar yet. But that didn't mean you were allowed to date if you were a superstar, and here's just a few examples of how insane it got. In 2014, long-running dating rumors of Girls' Generation member Taeyeon and EXO's Baekhyun were confirmed, and they became the first officially recognized idol couple within SM. You'd think everyone would be happy for them, right? Wrong. There was a huge wave of backlash with a small subset of XOLs even calling for Baekhyun to be removed from EXO entirely. Going even further back to 2011, K-pop fans collectively lost their minds when it came out that Kara's Guhara and Beast Junhyung revealed that they were dating. This was right around the peak of both artists' careers and frankly at the peak of DSP Media and Cube Entertainment as labels, and so it was a massive news story sensationalized by the media. As you can imagine, not all that buzz was positive and unfortunately it did distract from the amazing work that each idol and their groups were doing. Should it have? Definitely not, but it did. Another example that's hilarious in hindsight is that of Big Bang member Young, who revealed in 2015 he was dating fellow entertainment industry celebrity Min Hyorin. Young and Hyorin received tons of dismissive comments and accusations that it was a publicity stunt that wouldn't last. Obviously, they've proved the haters wrong at this point, with the two of them getting married in 2018 and just recently announcing that they're expecting a baby. And just in case you're not convinced that this can happen to anyone, here's one more wild example from none other than IU. When it was revealed IU was dating Jung Ki Ha, who was 11 years older than her, even the nation's little sister was subject to excessive judgment. Despite being in her 20s at the time, she was treated like a child, and she fired back at the haters with this scene in her music video for the song 23, where she depicts herself as an infant with a bottle and a doll to mock the haters. And it's not just in K-pop either, Japanese music also has an idol culture and in 2015 there was actually a court case that involved a music agency successfully suing one of its group's members for millions of yen because it was found out that she was dating, a violation of her clause in her contract. So clearly a lot of people have had some very heated opinions about idols dating no matter how big they are in the industry, and the media doesn't help with that issue either. But why is it such a big deal? Well there's quite a few reasons actually depending on the point of view from which you're looking at the situation. So I'll go over them here and share my own thoughts as we talk about each point, and I definitely want to hear your thoughts in the comments too. The first claim many people will make is that when an idol is dating, they're going to be distracted, less focused in practice and at promotions, and in general will have less time in their schedule. While I do think this can be true in some cases, and the power of love can never be underestimated, I do really think it's disingenuous to paint all idols like that and pretend that they're not professionals and don't care about their careers as an idol. That being said, if the relationship did end up souring, nobody is immune to heartbreak, and that could definitely wait on an idol for weeks or even months while they try to get over the relationship. Along a similar vein, we also often hear that idols should be 100% focused on the fans, giving fans service, and putting out a certain image as members in one cohesive group. K-pop is an idol culture, and the unfortunate truth is that there will always be a subset of K-pop fans who have extreme parasocial relationships with their biases, putting them on an unattainable pedestal and developing intense jealousy for anyone they end up dating. That being said, frankly, I think this is a pretty antiquated view. I mean, if K-pop fans didn't care about group members having individual personalities and being themselves, there wouldn't be any meaningful biases in K-pop at all. This is one aspect that was definitely present much more in older K-pop, where fandoms were way more intense and both boy groups and girl groups had a specific image they all put out. Thankfully, this has changed a lot in recent years, and while we do still see overall trends in K-pop, I think there's a lot less of labels forcing certain images and styles onto groups. And no more black oceans, but that's a topic for another deep dive. Now, as much as we might want to dismiss it, the point of view of the label here is important, because while as fans we see dating as a personal freedom for idols, companies see dating as a financial risk. Why? Well, because with dating comes the possibility for a scandal, and as we've already seen in the first section, it's impossible to predict how the media and that group's fandom will react to dating news. 
And a scandal, especially for a younger idol who hasn't necessarily earned their stripes in the industry, can spell disaster. Not just for them, but for their whole group. And that could mean the difference between the group being commercially successful or costing the label money with each comeback and needing to disband prematurely. Now with all that being said, my counter to any argument against allowing idols to date is a simple one. We all do our best work when we're happy and leading healthy, balanced lives. That's especially true for musical artists who draw on their own life experiences and their emotions every day as they write, compose, produce, and perform their own music. And thankfully, we've seen a big shift towards that sentiment in recent years. There have been a lot of smaller steps in the right direction in the past 5 years or so in K-pop when it comes to dating. As an example, when FX's Crystal and EXO's Kai became another official SM idol couple in 2016, just two years after Taehyun and Baekhyun, the relationship was largely embraced by fans. They were even given the couple name Kai Stol. But for me, all idols nowadays owe a debt of gratitude to the power couple to end all power couples, Hyuna and Dawn. I talked about this whole situation a fair bit in my Hyuna deep dive, but to give it a quick summary, a little while after the Triple H collaboration, photos of Hyuna and Dawn leaked, bringing the relationship into the spotlight. Cube Entertainment did what labels typically do in these situations. Deny, 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 unless it's so obvious to the public that you actually can't. Well, Hyuna and Dawn did make that an impossibility by holding their own interview with Yunhap News the same day to confirm that they were in fact dating. Cube Entertainment proceeded to throw a temper tantrum. They cancelled all of Triple H's planned performances, on-air appearances, fan events, you name it. They punished Hyuna and Dawn for being open about their feelings for each other. A month after that interview, the childish behavior from Cube continued as they said they'd be terminating both Hyuna and Edon's contracts, citing a quote, loss of trust. Their official statement said in part, After much deliberation, we've concluded that the trust between the company and the artist has been damaged to a degree that cannot be restored, leading us to believe expulsion is necessary. On October 15, 2018, Hyuna and Don proved that they wouldn't let archaic policies stop them from being idols in love, and they triumphantly left Cube after their departure was finalized. Of course, they have since joined P Nation and have been embracing their love ever since, even releasing new music together in September with the song Ping Pong. Hyuna and Don proved that idols have power, that a label can control them like they might have been able to a number of years ago. And they proved that they can still be successful and hold on to their fans with that decision with their successful move to P Nation. Not to mention that K-pop fans also proved that they were supportive of them openly dating by continuing to support their new music after the move. For me, this saga was a pivotal moment in the dating discussion. It proved that idols could continue their careers after openly dating, and it proved that fans would support them in doing so, and I think there's been a big change in perceptions with dating ever since. There's been a lot of changes when it comes to dating in K-pop since 2018, from the labels to idols and more. A lot of labels have in recent years either abolished dating bans, become more lax about dating, or made them more reasonable. As an example, JYP used to have a 5 year dating ban on their artists, but they reduced this to just the first 3 years after debuting. I think this is a lot more reasonable, because it gives the idols some time to focus on their career and grow a name for themselves as rookies without holding them back from dating once they've established themselves. And if you needed any proof of how much dating has been normalized by 2021, look no further than Red Velvet's Joy and Crush. These two lovebirds collaborated on the song Mayday in 2020, and when news broke that they were dating, it was only a matter of hours before both SM and P Nation confirmed the news, and Joy and Crush posted their own statements. There was no denial, no hiding it, and fans were, well, overjoyed that these two were happy together. Now, I'm not saying the situation is perfect now, but it definitely has vastly improved. One place I do think things could improve is kind of tied to K-pop in general, that being the insanely busy schedules that idols do have on a daily basis. So many idol relationships end less than a year or two after they start because the two idols have conflicting schedules and just can't find time to see each other. I'd love to see idols get more freedom from schedules in general, but I fear that's too much of an ask at this point. Nevertheless, I'm personally happy with the progress that has been made. Dating in K-pop has historically been an explosive subject that had huge ramifications for the idols who were dating as well as their groups. But thanks to some small steps in the right direction, and a huge one with Hyuna and Dawn's move to P Nation, in my view it's never been a better environment for idols to act on their feelings and to not be afraid to date. So those are my thoughts, but I'm sure you have a lot too. How do you feel about the current state of dating in K-pop? Do you agree with the shorter bands at the start of an idol's career? As always, thanks so much for watching this deep dive, and if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss all the great K-pop content coming your way right here at Hallyu. This has been deep dive number 75, Dating in K-pop. Oh,